So what's going on today, guys? Well, we're going to be dealing with a fuel line replacement on Goose, running a new fuel line, actually two new fuel lines inside of the tunnel for the future fuel injection system that we're going to be running. The problem I've been having is whenever I'm driving around and I really get onto it for any kind of duration, I know that I'm draining the fuel bowls of my carburetors. I got good pressure, but I checked the volume on how much fuel is getting to the back and it's not enough. But what's happened is, is that somebody had ran a, uh, a metal piece of like bailing wire through the uh, fuel line itself, I think in an attempt to keep it from clogging with other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So when I went to go pull that out, there was a lot of rust that had built up inside of the fuel line. And I think what has happened, just like with a blood vessel that gets smaller and smaller, you know, the opening gets smaller and smaller with the uh, cholesterol, rust being the cholesterol in this, uh, this um, scenario, or uh, um, what's the right word? Rust is similar to cholesterol. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Rust is similar to cholesterol in the, the bloodstream or the blood vessel. And inside of the fuel line, it's gotten smaller and smaller. So I think that that is my problem. And we'll really be able to tell once I uh, go to replace it. I'm going to cut off a little piece of the fuel line and we're going to look inside of it and see what we see. But today, what we're going to do is get the interior kind of removed because we're going to have to do that because we're going to be doing some cutting to the tunnel up towards the front and i'm going to show you guys a picture right here oh this picture shows a cutaway of the tunnel and i'm going to show you another picture that shows you the cut that i'm going to go ahead and do now inspiration for this fuel line system comes from air cooled and i'm going to put them up here and then link down in the description below you guys want to go check out their uh their channel and also check out their website because they have a lot of really cool parts and soon next year goose is going to be getting new brakes all the way around their bad brake system i'm going to be replacing all the drums that i have right now on goose with their bad brake system because they're badass all right guys let's take a look at the bench and talk about some of the stuff that we're going to be doing when it comes to parts and materials for this build come on let's go over there okay 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 we're at the bench so some of the tools that we need of course is the new fuel line and this is a 5 16 zinc plated fuel line uh i was trying to get the stainless steel fuel line but amazon's got jacked up descriptions on some stuff so this is what i ended up with 25 feet of zinc plated which is going to be fine for running the fuel line that i need to so this and then there's, there's going to be assortment of fittings including some bulkhead fittings and i'm going to show you guys some photos of those right now so Right now you'll see that I have a 90 degree bulkhead fitting that I'm going to be getting and uh, some 45 degree bulkhead fittings. And also there's going to be some flaring that's going to have to be done on this hard line, 37 degree flaring to go ahead and mate up with the A&N fittings. So this, well, this is garbage because I was playing around with this cheap uh, bender Oops, sorry about the bump, guys. This cheap uh, line bender that I got from from Home Depot. It's like 12 bucks, but it gets the job done for how much bending I'm going to be doing. If you're going to be doing this a lot, I, I assume that you would want to get a better quality line bender. But for the bends I'm going to be doing for running this, uh, this should be sufficient. Uh, also, a big arse hole cutter, which I have from like previous work that I've done. The tunnel... It's going to be getting a couple holes cut into it. I'm hoping just the one hole up towards the front near the brake pedal cluster. A lot of people do this this hole up there, and I will show you that right now in a picture and kind of show you, describe it. There's a cutout that people do up towards the brake cluster to do a clutch cable uh, repair. And I'm going to be having to do this because to run the new fuel lines through the tunnel, I have to have that access. Plus, to get to the bulkhead fittings that I'm going to be putting on, also need the access. Now, this is probably just going to be the starter cut. I'm honestly going to probably have to cut a bigger hole in there, and we'll be doing that later. So you definitely want to stay tuned because Goose is going to be getting a hole cut into her. And I know everybody wants to see that. <laughs> so also, a, uh, I have this pretty cheap um, line cutter which you, you don't need anything special for that. And then something to deburr the end. You can use any kind of file that you have to deburr the ends once you uh, cut them. So 
let's go ahead and start to get the interior taken out of Goose and get her ready for some of the changes. But uh, I think we're gonna go for a drive first, guys. Cold start, guys, cold start. It's been a few days since I've started her, actually. Oh yeah, she's cold. What's that? You guys wanna take a look at the engine? All right, let's do it. Smart in general. says, I'm never cold, damn it. I'm always ready to rock. All right. It's a warm depth, huh? Hopefully this uh, audio isn't too drowned out. But, uh, I kind of want to give you guys an idea of what she's doing when I'm driving her around. So let's go for a little cruise and see if I can demonstrate. Get you guys in a good position, I hope. So where you can see pretty good. Stay straight up. <laughs> I know it was a rough night last night, but come on, pull together. You are just not keeping it together. Come on now. to adjust the uh, adjust the weight the counterweight back here a little bit it's causing problems man causing problems yeah I need to get a GoPro for you guys it's really what we need huh get onto it or if I'm at high RPMs for a uh, duration of time like cruising for a while at higher RPMs it uh, starts to die you know I lose like uh, I lose power and uh, yeah I'm pretty dang sure that it's because my carburetor's running out of gas and yeah 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 I've heard the thing where it's like well, it starts doing it, just pull over, turn everything off real quick and take a look inside your fuel bowls. Yeah, that's not as easy as it sounds, guys. I'll rip apart the top, top of a carburetor. It's not super simple. Not super simple at all. Better. 
train because it's running out of fuel. Dang it. And I know I'm just dumping gas down into that engine because it wants lots of gas, man. She wants to fly like an eagle in the sky. So very high. Yeah, I know I jacked those lyrics up. <laughs> a couple of people pulling out in front of me like retards what the heck where's the love no respect no respect see we're just gonna do a really quick cruise around the block guys because uh we gotta get to taking some stuff apart and i gotta get to getting this video uploaded huh <laughs> well so far my new audio is working pretty darn good I'm not sure on how it's going to be yet for the drive. Uh, I will know here shortly when I check the video. <laughs> Sorry about the bounciness, guys. Like I said, it's a uh, we're in a drop Volkswagen Beetle, and it's kind of bouncy anyway. But someday when I get a GoPro, we'll be good to go. A little bit of sound for this is there. Go GoPro on both sides of the car, and maybe one uh, on uh, the front fender, maybe something like that I don't know we'll play with that when I get one to the road and just kind of like get off of it a little bit she gets the power back because she gets gas back in the dang carburetors so my old camera would just keep recording and recording and never would die the new camera that I had the new phone that I have the camera stops recording after like 10 minutes what kind of crap is that I had to check and see if that's a setting I can change because that's ridiculous. I want it to record for as long as it can. Why would you put a 10 minute thing on that? It's retarded. What's up, Samsung? What the heck, man? All right. So I'll get back to you guys in a minute when we get back to the garage. And we can talk a little bit more about what's going on and start to pull out this interior and look at where we're going to be doing some of the, uh, the modifications. The modifications to a uh, goose. Yeah. Because this is a resto mod. like a two liter and a Volkswagen Beetle guys sounds amazing fantastic it'll sound even better with fuel injection and turbo oh yeah <laughs>
So that was a fun ride, right? The true backseat experience with the camera going left and right, left and right. Now it's time to kind of pull out that uh, passenger side seat and mock up the idea of where the inspection plate's gonna go, guys, and show you what we're dealing with. So let's go ahead and get inside the car and take a look at that. All right, let's go. This portion of the video is brought to you by Oval Vision. Oval Vision, what it looks like from the back of an oval window. Dang it, it's locked on this side. <laughs> So the majority of the work is going to be happening on the passenger side of the car. I'm going to bring you guys around here in a second so you can see better what's going on. Yeah, Let's see if I can get you something else. So, so guys, can you see me? <laughs> What we're going to be doing now is taking out the passenger side seat in the back seat and giving you a better idea of what we're going to be doing to the tunnel. All right. Uh, I need to move the carpet out of the way a little bit and see if I can actually look down the emergency brake area. I don't think that's going to work. I think I'm honestly going to have to put two holes in my tunnel to do what I need to do. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping it's just the inspection tunnel area that I have to put the hole in, but, uh, Let's find out. I'm not sure yet. Get some tools to move out of the way. Oh man, I have to take. No, okay. I was thinking I was gonna take the seatbelt out. Oh, dude, I do have to take the seatbelt out. Oh, dang it! I don't like the idea of that at all. All right, let's get the seat out. The seats come out easy because, well, they're well greased. <laughs> One seat. <clears throat> A view no one else has had. <laughs> All right. I had to take out the back seat in a second here too, so I'm gonna toss this stuff over here for now. This carpet. Oh, fuel pump. <laughs> Sorry, right, guys. This is the area where the tunnel surgery is gonna begin. I'm gonna go ahead and get uh get my white marker out so we can mark this off it's like a paint pen it should work really well for marking the cut location for where we're going to be cutting on the tunnel all right let's try this again so we don't want to go below this line Cool. So we have a straight edge. Hey, look at that. Now let's draw a top line if we can get a top line drawn on here. Not with that one. All right. It's tough trying to do this without blocking the camera. Now, I've seen this done really badly online. A bunch guys and that is the last thing we want to do with goose right or with your projects we don't want to make it look like caca nope no caca guys no caca and let's draw this line this is all by hand right now so we'll probably be coming back through to check some measurements and this line over here. Come on, man, work with me here. I'm sure Goose is like, what the hell are you doing? Okay. Now the, I'm gonna have to let this dry a little bit. But that's the general idea. 
No pun intended, general. <sighs> so here we go, guys. We're going to get in close so you guys can see the uh, the penetration. And I honestly want to show you guys what the tunnel looks like inside because I'm curious as well. So what we have here is a, let's see what size this freaking thing is, if I can even read it anymore. Uh, nope. Let's measure it with the stick. It appears to be a one, two, three and a half inch hole saw. So it's time to enjoy, guys. Enjoy the whole oh, crap. I might need to move you a little bit. You might be in my way, so I'm hold on. Can't have that. Can't have you in the way. Sorry. I want you guys to see everything, but I don't want you to jack up my cut either. All right. So that is about centered. And here we go. Think about this for a second. I might need to go to the store and buy a hole saw that doesn't suck. It feels like it's still sharp. Maybe it's just just really hard to cut. I don't know. You guys tell me. I think it's just really hard to cut. I don't know. Well, guys, uh, fail number one. It's time to uh, rethink how we're doing this. So we've got out the uh, Black & Decker reciprocating saw. And, uh, well, it's a reciprocating saw. This is a, what do they call it? A circular saw? Not circular saw. That's not what it is. Damn, I'm so bad at this whole saw. Yeah, there you go. Uh, well, we're going to see how it does. There you go. What do you guys think? Probability, 100%, zero to 100%, 50-50 uh, shot. I'm thinking more like 12% uh, chance. I don't even know if it's gonna cut through the wall. Oh yeah, it's really gonna work well. I don't think so. It's a lot thicker than I thought it was gonna be which is uh, good and bad. No, we're not using this. All right, all right, all right. So we have moved to the uh, handy dandy no guard grinding wheel with a cutoff blade on it. And uh, we're about to find out how well this works. Flame possibilities, high. Uh, we're definitely, I'm gonna put a piece of cardboard right here to try to keep the sparks from going everywhere that I don't want them to go because I think that I can, I can contain a little bit and I got some flashing. I got a little piece of metal here. There we go. Yeah. Maybe we can kind of do this number. Maybe that'll help. I don't know guys. What do you think? It's about to get dangerous. Try to cut into this thing. See what happens. So I've got one cut in the bottom. So let's go ahead and try to cut the top and see what happens. Definitely a lot more sparks and that's kind of scary. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the fire extinguisher out from underneath the, uh, the seat because yeah, that's a lot of, a lot of sparks, <laughs> a lot of sparks. Guys, uh, warning, warning. There's a high probability that if you have a lot of 
shit, like, excuse me, let's rephrase that. If you have a lot of uh, gas and oil inside of your tunnel that has built up over time, because like brake fluid and stuff like that, that uh, you might not want to do this. I have no idea what's in my tunnel. So there is a risk factor to consider. Be safe, be smart, and at your own risk, cut into your tunnel with a grinding wheel. And here we go. <laughs> so I gotta be honest with you. It's just a little bit scary <laughs> doing this. So uh, definitely take precautions, be safe, have a fire extinguisher nearby. I've got one right here, guys. I've got a fire extinguisher ready to go. Uh, don't do this with a grinder or anything that's gonna create lots of sparks unless you have some sort of protection. I'm using a piece of metal right now to kind of deflect sparks. It seems to be working pretty well. Uh, you might have to end up removing your carpet all the way out to keep it from burning up. I burnt my carpet up a little bit. I'll show you guys that in a second. Unless you've already seen it, then you already know. All right, guys, back to the grinding. We're almost, I think we're almost through. I got one more cut to make, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, I think we're about through, guys. I'm gonna try to get a screwdriver and pop this bad boy, see what happens. What do you think? Do you think we're in? I don't know. I don't know, be right back. That seems pretty close. Yeah. I can see the tunnel. I can see the clutch cable. That's cool. Wow, that cut turned out pretty good, guys. That did turn out pretty good. Let me bring you down and show you what we got. So, here is the cut. You guys think? I think it turned out pretty good right on the lines and bring you inside here uh, i'm gonna put a light in there and see if i can help you guys see a little bit better be right back hey guys we have a light let's get a camera in there see what we see oh man i almost want like an exploratory camera there is something blocking the way right there i might have to remove this from the mount a little bit to help get the camera in there towards the front. Oh, that is so cool. So there, that's the front of the tunnel, guys. That is the coolest thing ever to be able to see inside of the tunnel. Up there, that is a choke tube. Very cool. And that is, that right there, up there, in the front, that's that's the, uh, my fuel line, right there. That's the fuel line. Let's go the other direction and see what we see. So guys, I ended up taking the uh, back seat out, and now I'm going to take off the the cover for the uh, the shift coupler, and maybe I can get some light in there and get a better view of the tunnel for you guys. I'm thinking maybe, maybe, just maybe. So that's not a for sure thing. For uh, the air cooled setup, the way that they have it going, there's two lines out the back of the car. I'm gonna get underneath and show you guys what I'm talking about to give you a better idea because, yeah, I think that'll help. <clears throat> safety first guys safety first <laughs> this from the good i was just like 
grinding, grinding sparks inside of his bug. Really? Really, Jay? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> nice and easy. All right, guys, to give you an idea where these holes are supposed to go, the air-cooled hole holes for the uh, bulkhead fittings. Here's the my rear transmission mount and the transmission ground. And if you look up there, yeah, up there, behind the transmission, the nose, maybe you can see it. I don't know if you can. Dang it. This is the glare. See that mark I put up there? That... that crappy mark that I can barely make. But well, there's supposed to be a hole like right there and then right next to it there's supposed to be a hole for the in and outlet or the in and the return or the feed and the return for the uh for the fuel injection. So there's definitely gonna have to be some more thought put into this process because I'm not pulling the transmission out to run a fuel line. So more to come on that I'm gonna go ahead and show you the front location because that'll be a little easier to show you where the two, where the, the feed and the return line are supposed to be up front near the tank. So follow me to the front guys, give me a second. Yeah, give me a second, I gotta drop this thing back on the ground. All right guys, we're on the back underneath the fuel tank again. And this is where you see right there, the two little dots that I put on the, uh, the tunnel in the front. That is your choke tube right there. And right here is where you're going to have the feed and the return for the bulkhead fittings. Very cool. So this is the forward facing camera. And the best it can give me with saturation. That's pretty cool. But that's the inside of the tunnel down there, guys. I wish I could give you a better scope, but that is it. Pretty cool. Well, guys, that is going to do it for today. I know it wasn't a whole lot that we got accomplished, but we did figure out some stuff on possibly how we're going to have to do this fuel line install, so that's always a good thing. Uh, we did get the uh, inspection window cut in the front of the tunnel, so we could take a look and see what's going on inside there, which that's kind of neat. I have to clean that up some to deburr that area before we make the plate to cover it. Um, and we didn't catch the car on fire, so that's always good. Check out the description below. As always, there will be stuff that I use in this video, like the uh, fuel line. If you want to pick up some, it'll be down in the description. Also, uh, the fittings that I plan on using for this install for the bulkhead areas, that'll also be in the description below. Thanks to all my subscribers, new and the ones that have been here for a while. You guys are great. Wouldn't be here without you. And I do appreciate everything, guys. As always, this is Jason from JW Classic BW. I will see you guys on the next one.